future historians would say this was when Wei's rise to power began. With the rebellion quelled, Cao Cao became the ruler of Yan province. In addition, he welcomed all of the yellow turbans who had surrendered into his ranks. They were named the Jing Province Army and became the main unit of Cao Cao's forces. What was it that these troops from Qing, as well as the people themselves, desired? Knowing the answer, Cao Cao swiftly mobilized his army. Dong Chua's tyranny had left the land surrounding the capital barren and neglected. Cao Cao decided to give these lands to the Qing troops to tend as farmland. Seeing this move, the warlord Yuan Shu immediately understood the threat that Cao Cao would one day become. He mobilized Tao Qian of Shu province, sending him to attack Cao Cao's rear flank. Sensing the impending attack, Cao Cao moved to strike first, dispatching his troops to Shu. Joining him in the march was Shu Chu, who had joined Cao Cao in the previous battle. However, neither Shu Chu nor even Cao Cao himself noticed that behind them was an ominous shadow, looming even larger than that of Dong Zhuo himself. With the emperor under his control, Cao Cao sent a clear message of his intent to rule the land. However, many battles yet stood between him and total domination. In Hebei, Yuan Shao had gathered a massive army to further his own ambitions. Additionally, Yuan Shu had obtained the legendary Imperial Seal and used its authority to declare himself emperor. These two powerful opponents bided their time, waiting for an opportunity to strike against Cao Cao. Furthermore, Numerous warlords began circling the emperor like a pack of hungry wolves waiting to pounce. It was then that Cao Cao found himself embroiled in a heated battle. His opponent was Zhang Xiao, who hailed from the land of Wan. With a mighty Dian Wei on his side, Cao Cao was confident of his advantage going into battle. Nothing more we can do. You... you would abandon me? Well, if it truly bothers you, I suppose you could always surrender. What? Oh, yes. If you are going to surrender, make sure you do it humbly. <laughs> my surrender was accepted. You have my gratitude, my lord. This is a modest little banquet we're having, but you're welcome to join us. So you're Cao Cao's bodyguard. I must say, you look pretty tough. So scary. Perhaps my compliment offended you? You want something, friend? I don't trust that Jia Shu. He's just got one of those suspicious faces. That Zhang Xiu's a real cheapskate. Us ordinary soldiers don't get a thing. Eat 
up. Eat up. This is a special treat. I feel bad eating this when our allies outside are starving. That looks good. Can I get some of that too? Look at him. He's so rugged and manly. Oh, you didn't hear that, did you? You used to serve Zhang Miao, didn't you, my lord? Hardly anybody is allowed inside the castle. Not even Sha Ho Duen or Shu Chu are here. Even Uncle is without his weapon. I hope nothing bad happens. Hmm. I did not expect him to surrender so easily. Is this all of the troops we have stationed here? Forgive me. We do not have enough food for all of the rank-and-file soldiers. While we would have liked to have invited everybody, the war has stretched our provisions to the limit. I see. In that case, I will wait outside as well. Lord Joshu is given the sign. Launch the attack. Kill them all. What's going on? I'll clear. Ian Wei, are you here? Trickery is Joshua's doing. Tian Wei, we must escape at once. I will keep you safe no matter what, my lord. We're here to help. So you are my next opponent. Oh, 
Tenacious indeed. Aim 
for Zalza. Dianwe! The first time I met you, I thought you were a little crazy, my lord. But when I saw how happy you may shoot you, I understood. I knew I wanted to see the world you could create. Dianwe! But he's riddled with arrows. He's inhuman. Fire! No one is getting past me! Go now! Escape while you still can! I will not apologize, but I will make your dream a reality. Don't let him get away. After him! <laughs> My lord, promise me you will make our dream of a new world a reality. Sorry, shoot you. Maybe we'll tend your field together another time. Cao Cao, you're okay. So it would seem. The men are ready to march on your orders. We still have hope, my lord. We must put those evil miscreants to the sword. My lord, we must seek our revenge in this battle. Joshu will pay for his treachery. I will slay him with my own hands. We must march at once, my lord. Our forces are ready. Dian Wei wouldn't want us to sit around mourning him. He'd say our time would be better spent helping Lord Cao Cao. Ah. Lord Dian Wei was courageous to the very end. I still cannot believe that Dian Wei is gone. We must avenge him by any means necessary. Joshu is renowned for his ability as a strategist. The road ahead is bound to be difficult. We must approach with caution. Lord Dian Wei was so good to all of us. We must avenge him! Is it true, my lord, that you said Liu Biao's sons were nothing but pigs and dogs? <laughs> Lord Cao Cao, I'm so glad you're safe. Come, Shao Duin, follow me. Cousin. Take the castle, show no mercy. Kill any in your path. We will attack from the east and the south. All forces. Advance! Surrender or die! Huh? 
retreat. This is not the end. My ambition cannot be stopped. Wow, you're amazing. I'm gonna have to work harder. So, so, now I'm gonna work even harder. forces have arrived and are making for our main camp. I bring urgent news. Zhang Xiao's forces are moving out from Wan Castle. Hmm. You are powerless before me. Now is our chance. Dispatch a unit to lie in wait near the Western Bridge. Yes, my lord. I will send Guo Jia and Li Dian. I grow weary of your presence. We also must rouse ourselves for this battle. What a disaster. I have no excuse to trouble you with this battle. You are powerless before me. This is but a temporary setback.
You appear to be a competent fighter. However, I will not be easily defeated. I know. You're weary of your presence. take Zhang Xiu from behind. Give the order to the ambush crew. <laughs> My lord, our ambush is worked. The enemy is in disarray. Now is our chance to strike. My lord, Joshu has made his move. You watch the enemy. I'll keep our lord safe. My lord, I will take care of the forces to the rear. You must avenge Dian Wei. Zhang Xiao needs to be listened. I warned him about crossing But you, Zhang Xiao, are a great man indeed. You stay calm in such a difficult situation. A true warrior indeed. You will carry our honor across the land. Surrender or die. Surrender or die. You are powerless before me. I have proven unworthy. I will not kill you. What? You would show mercy to a man like this? Not mercy. You killed Dian Wei and drove me to the brink. Your talents will serve to bring my rule closer. <laughs> you are a wise man, my lord. No mercy. If I find you are no use to me, you are dead. Dion Wei was dead. After successfully avenging his loyal retainer's death, Cao Cao set out in search of a path forward. A path of ambition. A path that would quickly and effectively lead him to domination of the land. A path that some would deride as cruel and ruthless. Cao Cao was determined to walk this path, alone if necessary. He returned to Xu Zheng, and together with his new strategist, Jia Xu, he began plotting his next move. Yuan Shao and his massive army in Hebei. The self-proclaimed emperor Yuan Shu. Jia Xu determined that Cao Cao must solidify his current position before taking on these two mighty foes. Just then, Liu Bei, who had taken Tao Qian's place as ruler of Shu, came in search of help. He had been attacked by none other than Lu Bu, who had been under his protection. Cao Cao gathered Xia Hu Duin, as well as Liu Bei and his men, and set out for Xia Pi in Shu province. Liu Bei, Lu Bu, and Cao Cao. Among the fields of Shu province, Three heroes of the age would soon be engaged in heated battle.